said, what Damn. Waist? What waist? Damn. Damn, you have a smaller waist Damn. than I do. Yeah. Do you? No. Do you? I mean, my belt's like a. <laughs> for my belt, <laughs> dude, I use like an extra small on my belt. Oh, Shit. yeah, you do have a small waist. The shop at the kids section. So, <laughs> keep, this is a different day. We're drinking some cafecito. Coffee, drink responsibly. Yeah. Coffee, too. There's no more coffee, but she's still holding there's it There's a up. little bit. A little bottom. bit. It's like the shot. And Dylan is trying to wake up still. Yeah. I'm trying to open it down. There you go. Ooh, he just Ooh, smells almost 100,000. Boom. Yeah, it was it was tough. It was tough. Bam. Mm. Tulsa Live Podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast is back. And to my right, we have a very motivated, inspiring, funny, authentic girl next to us. And that is Magali in the house, baby. Let's go. <laughs> How you feeling? I'm excited to be here. I'm really, really excited. I really like doing podcasts, to be honest. How many podcasts have you done prior to us? This will be the, my third. Your third. So the past two that I've done so far, I, I just like it. Is this a, something you're about to get into soon, soon enough? Like have my own podcast? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. I like, I don't think like I'll be able to have that flow like you guys Consistently, do. Consistently, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're doing a lot already, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're, how long have you been on the spotlight? Let's say, sort of say. Mm, I want to say since December. And the December. Yeah. What was what was the first viral video that that you had that made you realize like oh shit like it it's was, happening? It was Amanda, Amanda for sure. Yeah, because like Seven Eleven, I was already doing videos at Seven Eleven, but people were here and there recognizing me. But after Amanda like took off, people were like oh Amanda, 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 oh the Seven Eleven girl from Amanda. Yeah. Yeah, that's like basically when everything just. And w so for you, when did you when did you decide like because do you still work a nine to five job right now? No, not anymore. Full time. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you bet it on yourself. I had to. I had to quit my job because, like, it was becoming a lot. And it was, like, becoming two time, two full-time jobs. Ooh. So I was, like, because I was doing medical assistant. So there was times I had to be at work, like, at 4 a.m., 3 a.m., and then go film. And I was, like, oh, my gosh. Like, I was calling off so much at my old job. Yeah. <laughs> to the point that I thought I was going to get fired because they spoke to me, like, if you're, like, late again, like You're people, done. Yeah. I was like, oh, shoot. Like, let me just give my two weeks before so I get how, fired. So how was that for you? Like, did you have a doubt that, you, oh, fuck, maybe I shouldn't quit this good job oh, yeah. right now? It took me, like, three months to make that decision for me to, like, quit my job or just go part-time. But my job wasn't letting me do part-time. So I was like, okay, should I just look for another job or should I just focus on this? They wanted you there. Yeah. <laughs> Full-time. So for you, like, what was that? What did you tell yourself? What was that the day before look like when you put in those two weeks or when you quit? I was nervous. I was like, should I have like a backup plan? Like, should I get a part-time job or what should I do? But think, I mean, thank God everything's been working great for me. I haven't, you know, yeah. struggled or, or anything. So I'm very thankful. But yeah, it was just like those two weeks. I was just like, oh my gosh, like, should I just tell them my boss? Like, never mind. <laughs> like, like, I want to come was back. Nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. So what? Quitting that job, transitioning, like, before December happened, did you see yourself in these shoes that you're in right now? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Everything just been happening so fast that I haven't been able to, like, como que no me caí todavía el 20. ¿Qué es eso? No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just Yeah, no. Yeah, like, yeah, I still, like, I don't know if it feels like, I still feel me, or I don't know if I'm supposed to feel like it changed, but I still feel like, me like it just my lifestyle can change now is it your did you change or just the lifestyle changed my lifestyle just changed no cambiaste no has cambiado no 
I feel like I'm still the same person. I feel like the same person as I was. So who's a few who, months ago? So if you can describe Magali, say like in two or three words, like what what can how can you describe her? I would say very shy. People really think I'm not like I'm like outgoing, but no, I'm very shy. Like busting dance moves left and right and yeah, shit. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I just put my phone, you know, like I just forget. But yeah, I'm a very shy. Um, very, I guess, like really like keep things to myself. Mm, private person. Yeah. Do you, when you went through that transition, your group of friends are these the same group of friends that you started with and had, or did things change when mm-hmm. social media started like? becoming bigger platforms started growing did that change or well i guess like well my friends because i'm from chicago so all my friends are in chicago right so when i moved here i didn't have any friends Mm. so i started noticing that my friends were maybe it's because like we live so far we don't really have that connection anymore yeah but i don't talk them i don't talk to them anymore I don't know if it's because of so- social media or just because we live far away. Never got those messages like, hey, you remember me? Miss you? Uh, <laughs> no, but I got in. I mean, I get, I get some few, like, comments, like, from my old friends or school yeah. friends. They're like, hey, like, this is amazing what you're doing. When did you come from Chicago? When did you move? Um, October. So I was going to bring that up. I did research that. Yeah. I saw you lived in Chicago, but it was a, f- it was a picture that you have on your Instagram if, you s- if people scroll all the way down. Mm-hmm. And it was a picture of your dad took of you dancing, like at a dance recital or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, damn, okay, so Chicago, we're over here now. So when when was that change that you did? Well, I I moved, yeah, in October. So it's been, what, like nine, eight, ten months? Oh, sh- yeah. recent. Uh-huh. Oh. Sh- <laughs> yeah, so it's been pretty recent. And now, it, was it a big life changing for you, like, scenery because my cousin lives in chicago Mm -hmm. i know my cousin is different than me and like his lifestyle out there compared to here the lifestyle is different though very very different yeah like here i feel like in la is like always rush like quick 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 and chicago is like more calm more chill even though it is a city but here oh my gosh it's like it just i always feel rushed you gotta you gotta find something to do and Mm -hmm. there's always something to do for sure oh yeah there is Mm -hmm. where where uh your parents originally from my family from my dad's side is from Guanajuato. My mom's side is from Jalisco. Mm, travel to Michoacán. Michoacán, okay. Michoacán, ciudad, right? Guanajuato, Guanajuato. okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 There's nothing wrong with that. Ashley? Where? Jalisco. Jalisco, okay. What part of Jalisco? Uh, Zapopan. Zapopan, okay. Mm-hmm. So you're a tequilera? Yeah. Everyone's in the family, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> have you traveled to both places already? Have you visited and stuff? Yes, I, I was, uh, I usually, yeah, I was like for six years in Mexico living there. Oh, yeah. shit, okay. So, uh, exactly where did you live in Mex- in Jalisco? No, in Zapopan? In Guanajuato. In Guanajuato. Yeah, in Guanajuato. Mm-hmm. yeah I, was, I was there for, like, for school, and then, like, summer I would go to Jalisco just to visit my grandma, stay there for, like, two or three months during summer. Then go back. So you really went through that life, that life change, the lifestyle change from living in Mexico, Chicago, to now in yeah, LA. Yeah, I mean, growing up, like my parents, I don't know why they were doing this to us, <laughs> but like after I was born, I was born in Chicago, right? So they flew us to Mexico. We were there for three years, and then we went back, and then we went back. We were always going back and forth, back and forth, and until like we were like maybe like twelve, we we're like, okay, like hold on, like where are we staying? Like where is our home? Yeah. We we're like, okay, let's just stay here. And that was it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I mean, I'm happy that, that I live in Mexico because I know the lifestyle now. I went to school. I know how to read and write in Spanish. So, are you grateful for more things? I think I am. Like, I feel like living in Mexico made me, f- like, I, I want to say, like, humble, I guess, or not being not like a Sabo kid. <laughs> I'm happy I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, I'm, I'm really, really happy that yeah. I'm like, my parents really. Took me to Mexico, and I appreciate more things that I have. What was the What was something that your mom or dad like really taught you, and that now being your age and where you're at now, like you look back on like fuck, man, you were you were right. <laughs> I feel like just to appreciate everything that I have. Like I feel like I'm very humble. Like como que me like I feel like I get I don't know I like I don't complain about anything. It just as long as I have a place to live, food, I feel like I'm good. Okay. And yeah. I, I see like I. I don't know. Have you been in Mexico? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So if you see the lifestyle in Mexico different. to the U.S. is so different. Like here we have everything. It's so easy for us to like have everything. You can have an iPhone pretty easy. Yeah. In Mexico, you can't really do that yeah, unless it, you have money. For real, like I think the we complain so much. Like I think our our world society generation, like we complain so much, and it's easier to complain. Mm -hmm. You can like it's probably easier to complain than to go and do something positive or do something with your life, right? And when we went, I think, yeah, well, como dos años, like, these dudes were washing the windows, pumping gas in your car, whatever the case is, and say you give them 100 pesos, like, that's not a lot, like. But they're thankful. Yeah, they're th uh -huh. and they're just like, bro, thank you, gracias, and they're working for, like, for, if you have coins over there, like, they're working for coins. Mm -hmm. If you give them some sort of bill, like, that's huge, because just the wages is a lot differently, right? Oh, yeah. And right here, the the again, the opportunity that we have is just endless. And that's that's one thing about this platform is showing that hey, like you can make it, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think you are living living proof that being yourself, you can still be somebody in this world, right? So being in this platform, like what what does life look for you? Look at for you now, like. Do people send you, like, messages of, yo, you, you inspire me, bro, like, your videos make my day? I think they say, like, they always get, like, a good vibe of me. And that, because I, I go live a lot on TikTok, so I, I like getting really personal with my followers. Yeah. And I do get messages saying, like, oh, like, I just love how, like, how you are. You're, you're just being yourself. And... You make me want to make videos too, or you yeah. know, just like enjoy life, just take the risk. Because I always tell them, like, I moved from Chicago to here, not knowing nobody, no family, no, nobody. So, were you alone for yeah. a good, am good amount of time? Mm -hmm. You were okay, okay with being alone? It was hard at first. Are you more like a, you want to be a social butterfly? Um, I like my alone time, but there is times like during the weekends, I guess, like, I just want to have friends and go to the beach, go to, I don't know, just have fun. Yeah. But I like being alone. Yeah, I think I, I got in used to it. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what what is a tough day look for you though? Like when we don't see on social media, like what do you go through behind closed doors that you know mm -hmm. the public doesn't see? I think being alone, to be honest. Even though I, I like being alone, but missing like I'm really close to my family. Mm -hmm. So missing my family, my friends. Like there are times like I don't want to like go out. I just want to stay home. And just, like, yeah, like, even, yes, I can go to the beach by myself, but I don't know, just, like, being alone, I feel like I've gotten homesick. And I, I like, the first couple, the first month I was, like, getting homesick when I first moved here. Uh -huh. and the past two months I've been getting homesick. Wait, did, so you blew up in Chicago and uh, then you moved over here? I blew up here in, in California. Oh, shit, yeah. okay. Your parents are here now, too, or they're back in Chicago? My mom is just in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. Oh, damn, it's tough, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, it's very tough. Yeah. You I say mean, you're like you're a uh, mama's girl or a daddy's girl? Well, my dad passed away, so I don't. Oh, have I'm it. so sorry. So it's just my mom. I I feel like I've become like a mama's girl now. Uh, was that tough for you? Oh yeah, it was. Is that something like you still battle like now? You're twenty six. Twenty six. Mm -hmm. We're the same age. We're young as fuck. You're so young. Yeah. <laughs> young and beautiful. Early 20s. <laughs> early 20s. Early 20s. We can't say the number now. Yeah. We're early 20s. So was that tough for you? Or is that still tough for you right now? Dealing, like, being in this mm -hmm. platform? I feel like not as much as before. It's just, like, I wish my dad was here and seeing everything. But now that I, ever since my dad passed away, the way that I see life is different now. Mm -hmm. It's like I had to take it chances. I had to, like, risk it and just live life and see what happens. It doesn't work out. At least I try because you never know you're gonna be here tomorrow. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I got to. We got to. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Um. So you don't work at Seven Eleven? No, I do not. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I just, nah, never worked at Seven Eleven, but her videos have been at Seven Eleven, right? Mm -hmm. Your friend worked at Seven Eleven. I think yeah. one of your videos mm -hmm. I have seen worked at Seven Eleven. Um, so for you in a, in a platform that you're in, like, how much do you do of content, like, in order to have for every day? Mm, like, what do you mean, like, how Like, much? do you do it 
you have to work all week to do all that content? Um, TikTok is so easy to film videos, to be honest. So there are times like I film like three videos in one day, and I can just post those three videos in a week, in that week. Or, yeah, I mean, at least I try to film maybe like two, three times a week. Yeah. So now with your, all the events that you get invited to, like, how does that nightlife, those events look like for you? Like, being in the, people want to take pictures uh-huh. with you, like, all this stuff. Like, how does that feel? I remember the first time I got recognized, and that was, like, in Santa Monica. And this, and I was filming an actual video, and this little girl saw me from a distance, and I was wearing a bucket hat. And then she ran up to me. She's like, oh, my gosh, like, I love your videos. I was like, what the heck? Like, that was the first time Amanda was already, like, blowing up. Yeah. And she came up to me, and I was shaking. She was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> then my friend was like, you can't be nervous if she's going to be nervous. Like, well, this is my first time, like, dealing with people, you know, recognizing me. Yeah. And then we went <laughs> to the pier, and people were, like, watching me film videos. I was like, oh, my gosh. Nerve- like, wasn't that nerve-wracking? It was. I was like, why are, like, are you, well, like, why is, who, who are these people? Yeah, yeah. And they were coming up to me like, hey, Amanda, esa la Amanda. I, I just thought it was funny because people were like, they don't know my name. Yeah. They just know me as Amanda. Because <laughs> of the song. I mean, I think that song even blew up. And then I seen you you went to a concert too, no? And mm-hmm. I mean, the whole fame and everything from your being Amanda, mm-hmm. like is there a persona that you kind of had to change because people know you as Amanda compared to Magali? I feel like it's only, like, the Buckethead girl. Oh. But, I mean, other than that, I'm Amanda Magali is still the same person. Still the same person behind the name? Yeah. Because, I, like I guess the look, <laughs> pretty much. So, for with everything happening right now, like, what, is there a purpose? Is there an end goal that you have? Is there a plan that you have with mm. everything you're doing right now? That's a tough one. I feel like there's a lot. Um, I think I just... I would love, I, th- I think anyone can relate to this. Like, if you had money, you want to help your people. Like, I will obviously would love to help my mom. Um, also, like, since my parents came from Mexico, uh, like, I know what is going through, like, having to, you know, work for your family and just, like, people, you know, like, there's people who live in, ap- in very, really small apartments and they, they all sleep in one room. That was that was me, too, when I first moved to, from Mexico to the U.S., so I would love to help like those families in the future and just I like I understand what what is going through that. You know the yeah. struggle. Yeah. Like you've been without a lot of people knowing like you've been through it behind closed doors. You've been through it before this platform that because of your experience in your life mm-hmm. like you know what you what you're set out to do. Right. So like I think you're off of your videos, right? You're a happy person. You're very entertaining. You're out there like you're doing your thing you're making people smile off the videos you're doing Mm -hmm. for you what is that definition of happiness that like you can give say even like a young girl that's looking like yo how are you so happy every day i think just enjoying life because i feel like my point at the end of the day i just want people to (laughs) in their lives and just do it and not be like oh what if i actually did it Mm -hmm. because like going back to like my dad passing away like, that made me view it different. I feel like I want to give that message to everyone. Just take a risk. And you never know what's going to happen. It might work out. If it doesn't work out, at least you tried. And that's something I want to give out to the people. Damn. See, you're yeah, pretty motivational, too, if you want to. I guess, wanted, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to. Um, so going back to, like, your whole events and everything, you're meeting, now that you have, like, a manager and you've had a manager, like, that's something huge, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Being in this platform, being in the shoes that you're in, like you're ongoing left and right. Like after this podcast, you're getting your bags ready and you're going, you're taking off. Right. Yes. Is now, so this is your full time job. You're doing it. Is there sort of a break that you t- try to take, take, or you're right now you're just full time work? Um, right now, just full time. I feel like I haven't gotten to that point that I I want to like take a break. Right now, I'm just like I feel very, very motivated. So I just, like, want to keep going until, like, I'm tired, then I'll take a break. But as right now, I'm just taking advantage of everything. What is So when you go out to clubs, bars, or whatever the case is, you get hit on pretty often? Um, if I'm wearing the bucket head, it, it's pretty often. Um, yeah. The bucket head is the it? The bucket head is it. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> That's a secret? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't put on a bucket hat, big guy. 
Yeah, it's like I can be facing this way and someone will come up to me and be like, hey, like you're the Amanda girl without even saying my face. They're like, oh, because of the bucket. I'm like, how confident do you feel? What if it wasn't? Imagine? Yeah. You should put it on one of your friends and give him the bucket hat. Right? I should. <laughs> what, it, what was like the, what's, what's one of the things that they told you that kind of like got your attention or kind of like, bro, get the fuck away? On, from a guy? Yeah. Being out, like being out there with your bucket hat, you getting hit on, or someone trying to be slick. Oh, someone, I mean, it didn't really get my attention. I just thought it was funny. He um, he, he said, you want a drink? I was like, oh, yeah, like, sure. And he's like, okay, I'll buy you a drink now. I had to take you on a date. I was like, what? And he was, like, very confident. He was. He gave me his phone. He's like, here. And that was at the, um, by Pico, Pico Rivera. Picolandia, bro. Picolandia, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Because I went to a good video, I remember that guy came up to me, he's like, you want to drink? I was like, okay, sure. Before At that, two, that night market? Yeah. Uh-huh. So it was Oh, there. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was I was like, okay, like, why not, right? And then he gave me his phone. He's like, okay, give me your number. I'm like, sir, like, I just, like, no. <laughs> you this can slide private. to my DMs, but. <laughs> this is private. So you pay attention to your DMs? I try, yeah. There's some few DMs that I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's like people, you know, like really kind messages, then yes, I will reply. So if you don't mind me asking, are you seeing somebody right now? Are you dating? Looking, no, I'm, not I'm looking. Single. I feel like if the right person comes, I'm not going to let myself stop. But yeah, right now I'm just, you know, just whatever what's, happens. What's the qualifications though? <laughs> For like everybody that's going to listen in and they're going to be like, all right, how can, you Take know what notes. I mean? <laughs> Take notes. Get the. Everybody writing notes. <laughs> um, I like someone with a good sense of humor. Uh, someone outgoing. Very, I would say this, like, very humble. Because I want to bring that person to my family and just kind of, like, social, too, with my family. I really like that, too. Um, someone who will take chances, just, like, risk their life. Just have fun. Okay. Yeah, cause I I seen the I was watching one of the like the videos that you came out in, and it was just that like you said, some you don't want them to be cocky because mm -hmm. you want them to be able to bring them home. Right. I think when you bring somebody home, like that is sacred, right? Right. Like that, the person you bring home is. You don't want to bring just anyone home to to your family, right? Yeah, not everybody's allowed to. Yeah, like that. To be around that that it. friend group, <laughs> yeah. So, you could say you believe in love. I do. Yeah. Marriage? I feel like it's so hard now these days. Marriage is kind of hard now. Oh, why? Huh? Why? Marriage is just like, I don't know. Now, that, Okay, before, like, I wanted to get married, right? But now that I'm getting older, I feel like seeing so many divorce in my family, <laughs> I feel like, I, I don't know, it's just as long as maybe if they propose, then that's fine, but... Marriage, I wouldn't like. But if they get down on one knee, propose, are you gonna leave them there and be like, no, ah, I'm, start I'll, laughing, <laughs> <laughs> great one, no. I'm like I'll laugh then I like, but I'll take that break. Levántate, güey. No, no, it's not very good. I'm kidding. No me hagas esto, güey. Levántate la verga. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> I, I will say yes. Like I will love the proposal, everything. But marriage is, uh, I feel like it's so different now. It's tough. Uh huh. Especially, in, I mean, everybody has says. Finding love in LA is tough. It is. I feel like it is. If but is it? But is it tough for you because of the platform you're on? You don't know the right intentions off the mm -hmm. bat, or I feel like it goes in so many ways. Um, someone who is not in that platform, it can be kind of scary because you don't know if they just want clout or they like you for who you are. And dating someone who's in the industry, some people come off very cocky. Mm. Or they're like they think they're old that or it just it's kind of like hard. I got a blue check. Yeah, know who I am. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So, so it's for hard. you to post people, like, is it tough to post? Say you're hanging out with new people. Is it tough for you to post them because you don't know the right intentions just yet? Um, I feel like you can feel like the vibe right away. Yeah. So I just go with the flow. Like if I'm hanging out with you guys, for example, like if I feel like the vibe is great, like why not? I think we're okay. Yeah, we're like, all, so we're, we're all like, right. I feel like, we're well, all right. <laughs> I'll post you guys right now. <laughs> I don't know about him, but, <laughs> nah, but, yeah, it's it's tough because I feel if, if you start a platform now, mm -hmm. 
there is people that are gonna that believe in you off the get go. Right. Like, yo, oh, you're blowing up, man. Congratulations. I always seen this. Or like you quitting your job, somebody could have been like, bro, like what the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like, are you serious? Like this is not gonna happen. It's not gonna blow up, not gonna take off. Right. Until people see the numbers taking off, doing events, being with certain people, right? Like I think the verification for a lot of them is if you're around a big name, oh bro, you did it, you made it. It's like, nah, bro, like, it's just, it's I just agree. part of the journey. Actually, I agree with you because a lot of people have seen me do a lot of things, but I'm not where I want to be, and I haven't made it yet. I yeah. feel like I'm going towards that way, but I haven't. Yeah. I mean, it's great that I feel like people see it that way, but I feel like that goes to anyone. Like, people will be like, oh, you're doing great. But yeah. I guess we're, like, we're always tough on ourselves. I think you have to, though. Like, right? in order for you to keep striving and, and thriving, like, you have to be your best and worst critic. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, how we said yesterday, everything's blowing up, taking off, and I could be like, "Damn, hell yeah, bro, we're fucking doing it." But it's like, nah, bro, not yet. Like, yeah. we're like, I like, we're about to be two years. We're still just starting. Right. For me, mm-hmm. for us, for me, and like, nah, bro, todavía vamos empezando. Like, nos falta. Like, yeah. if we want to be somewhere, like, yo, there's a lot of work to do. Someone was like, nah, bro, like you got to give yourself those flowers. I'm like, no, not yet, because. They're like, oh, but wherever you're standing, like, you did it. I'm like, no, but I want my ten toes down. Mm-hmm. I want to know, like, all right, if I could get to this position now, it's because I worked hard. Right. But imagine if I just keep going without getting that verification like I did it. Bro, it's endless. Mm-hmm. Like, you, s- December to now, you're blowing up, taking off. Like, your numbers on TikTok, Instagram, like, everything is there. Mm-hmm. But imagine a full year of doing what you're doing right now right. where double it maybe. where could you be like yeah. you know what i mean what opportunities can come what can you get out of it what brands you can do like even your own stuff mm-hmm. your own bucket hat right. like your own line of bucket hats for right. everybody to wear and you can be tripping out one day like you're gonna walk down the street you're gonna see someone with your bucket hat like damn someone's wearing my shit i think that would be so cool that day that i see someone wearing my bucket i'm like oh dang like okay we in la we can go find something right, right. now just <laughs> put your names on there but for you, what's that satisfaction? Like, when are you content? When are you happy? Like, once, like, I've made it to, or? What makes you happy? Mm. That's a lot. But a lot of things make me happy, I guess, but. What's that one thing that, like, you see it, and you don't even have to say it. You just take a moment, and you're like, damn. I think just, I'm very, like, Mama's girl. So seeing my mom, like, she's happy with what I'm doing. Yeah. she. That's, like... Has she, has she told you she, she's proud of you? Um. Yeah, she Or has. she still says you're crazy because you're doing social media. No, she's very, like, not... She doesn't say, like, I'm proud of you, but she's always, like, mija, cuando subes otro TikTok. <laughs> oh, mija, like, muy bien. Like that, like, she will, like... But, I mean, I know that she's proud of me. She's always supporting. She's always, like, messaging me, like... um trying to see when's the next video or what I'm up to or when is my next event. ¿Qué te dice? Cuídate. Yeah. She's like, cuídate mucho. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I will. Every time you get out the door, cuídate. <laughs> Por favor. Check in. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I think the even like the video we just put up, like we take that for granted of walking outside and thinking, hey, we're going to come home no matter what. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that that. That's all the case all the time. Right. Like, we don't know what dangers there is out there. We don't know what, what crazy things can happen, what crazy people we can Especially see. Especially now these me. days. Especially being a girl, dude. I know, it like. It sucks. It does it, suck. It, it, <laughs> it's, it's tough because, like, I know as, as us guys, like, how we say, oh, bro, we can handle ourselves. Shit can always happen. But for girls, like, just mm-hmm. by the way you dress, it's an automatic, you know. Yeah. And then you get those people, like, Cindy is, Cindy's bad, bro. Like, you tell her something fuck you looking at oh really <laughs> she's oh, like what yeah. the fuck you looking at <laughs> and she has like her own taser and everything uh-huh. like try me like right now she want to go do her like something for the car she's like i'm taking my pepper spray real quick I'm yeah because like, you never know like you can be like it can be daylight and i guess you can be safe but you never know yeah it's scary have you felt like in in like you, that was questioned at one point when you're going out um or like when you see those type of like events like do you just hey we got no, but I feel like now with everything that's going on, like the whole shooting thing and everything, it's yeah. like it's scary because like 
you can go anywhere and anyone can be carrying something. Someone would just go crazy and, you know. Yeah. I feel like that's always, like, my wor- biggest worry. Like, for example, I went to the movies a um, few weeks ago, and um, the lights, like, were going on, right? I was like, oh, shoot. And I got scared because it got me thinking. The first thing that came up to my head was, like, is there shooting going on? Yeah. And then I got scared for that. Then I was like, that's that's weird. I mean, it's so scary and sad that, like, we had to Yeah, to be traumatized by that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tough world that it we're is. living in. Mm-hmm. And we're going to start off the second part with the fucked up question. But how many friends do you have? No, got? that's actually, you know, <laughs> it might I'm sound like, stupid, it, but it, it, it I, is. I felt like it sounded so mean. Like, yeah, damn, how many friends do you got? <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> that's all that, bro? Yeah. Uh, your friend group, ¿cuántos tienes? How many friends do I have? I feel like the older you get, you lose friends. Because you either just grow up and you get married, you have kids. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Does it, does it, does it know? Testing, testing. Um, She's going to rap for us real quick. No, I can't even rap. <laughs> do you know how to sing? No. Mm-mm. Only a shower. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't want to hear me. Somos, can- somos cantantes. We're a group. Oh, yeah? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Definitely don't know how, but sorry. Sorry to interrupt, but. No, you're good. As you get older, you do lose friends. Mm-hmm. Your friend group becomes smaller. Yeah, I, f- I feel like as when you're a kid, like, oh, like, I want to have this many friends. But, I w- like, I don't care if I have a really small group of friends. So, like, right now, um, I have to count. So, it's, I want to say four or five. Like, those four, all four, like, if they call you right now, they didn't need you, you would leave. Yeah, if it's like an emergency, yeah, yeah. Like, and this is just like for coming. Like, wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm working. Homie. I'm working not, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it. I um, Dre asked us last last week. Like, oh, how many friends do you got? And in those amount of friends, how many would you like get up and leave right now if they called you because they needed you? Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, I got too many. Well, he said too many, but I know I have less than ten. It keeps either it gets smaller or we add another person or like right. it stays between those numbers. But how you said earlier, like I'm okay with being alone. Mm-hmm. It sucks. Don't get me wrong, but but it's nice being alone sometimes. We learn yeah. like oh yeah, you learn so much by yourself. I've learned so much about myself already. What you learn? Que aprendiste? Aprendo mucho. So like you can tell us in Spanish. I think it sounds cool in yeah, Spanish in too. Spanish? Oh yeah. <laughs> Have you ever done like a Spanish podcast? We did con el sombrero ranch. Oh, how it was that? Oh, man, it was amazing. I got my grandma to watch it. Oh, no way. Like, uh, That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I got my grandma to watch it. She was, uh, she was always, she's been watching the podcast. And a veces si se me sale, like, eh, el español. Mm-hmm. So she listens. Mm-hmm. Pero con el Sombrero Ranch, shout out Sombrero Ranch. Um, Israel, his, it's funny. Israel Jr. and Israel Sr. were sitting with us. And his dad was just throwing gems, like. You know, la, la vida es como una, la ruleta, um, what is it, like, rusa, like, a veces te va a ir para arriba y agárrate porque te vas a, vas a subir, pero uh-huh. la misma vez, cuando baja, vas a agarrar, pero hang on, because that shit's going back up. True. So. That's how, I mean, that's how life is. Yeah, but I was like, oh. Someone asked me, like, yesterday, I think Cindy, too, she was like, oh, she do another one in Spanish. I'm like, I'm an Osabo kid sometimes. Really? Like, I, like, hablo bien en español, pero a veces, like, no puedo agarrar la palabra bien, and I'll just say it in English. You know what? I feel like that's how I am, too. Even though, like, I speak Spanish really, really good, yeah. but I feel like living in the U.S., like, I, I don't know, it just, I just mix my, my language. Vamos a hablar en español, ¿no? Yeah. Estamos bien. Dame el <laughs> I don't know why I feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, fuck, do I know the words? Can I say the words? A little testing. Not because I think there are phrases that we learn in Spanish that we can't. Mm-hmm. They come out different in English, right? Is there one in Spanish that you like? It resonated with you. Um, something your dad, your mom, your aunt, grandma, someone told you. No, I don't. I don't think so. I can't think of anything right now. You? Blanca. Um, my grandpa. Um, es es vale llegar tarde que nunca llegar. Oh, okay. Or siempre para adelante nunca para atrás. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's, that's great. Always forward, never back. I'm like, okay, True. cool. And then everything started, like, trans- like everything today, like, even in the morning, I had my moment. 
like I woke up, everything's for me, like it may not sound like that, but like numbers are blowing. And for me, it was like, all right, I wish I could call. Like my grandpa passed away, my best friend passed away, and I was like, I wish I can call them. Tell them how you said it. How you feel? Yeah, like I wish that they could see everything that's happening. And like, and even today, like, I was like, yo, like, I hope I'm making you proud. It's tough because when you're, when you, when you have to go away, mm-hmm. you got to go to events, you got to miss certain family events, friend events because you're working. Like, people don't think it affects you, but right. that shit takes a toll. And the only see, like, for you and for, uh, and for me, like, they only see what we want to that show. Glimpse. Yeah. That 10 second really video, uh-huh. 30 second video yeah. of you dancing, laughing, smiling. We're here, we're doing this. Mm-hmm. But they don't see, like. After the cameras are turned off, like, they don't know how we're feeling. Yeah, like, fuck, bro, I miss this. Like, yeah. You know, like, we all go through our own fucking demons. We all battle our own fucking demons every day. Mm-hmm. That I could tell you my demons, you're not gonna understand them. Right. She just said it earlier, I could tell you everything I just went through. You're not going to understand But it. the thing is, like, you won't, we will never understand until we go through the same thing. Because <laughs> that's what I think. Damn. <laughs> that's going to be a TikTok. I already know. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the power of TikTok, it takes 10 seconds to reach Millions hundreds of, of thousands. Yeah. And it's ongoing. Like, again, shout out, shout out Gage, bro. J- Gage is doing it for us. 10-year-old kid is getting over a million views. How does it feel? Have you talked to him? Um, I talked to his dad. Even his dad is like, bro, what's fuck going on? I was like, uh-huh. well, I can't tell you what's going on. Like, I have no idea. Like, we woke up yesterday, uh, YouTube right now. I have, By the time this airs, I have no idea where it's going to be. But we're at 1,800. And we woke up today and we're at 3,200. That's good. I'm like, what the fuck is going on out here? Mm-hmm. But... Like, even plays, I think that video has, like, almost on audio, like, 3,000, like, people listen. Uh-huh. And it's the beauty about, like, again, TikTok is, if you're going to start something, do it on TikTok. Oh, yeah. It, I feel like TikTok is very easy to grow your platform and expand it to other platforms. What's your plan? It's actually, someone sent me a video that you were on live today, right? Getting ready, mm-hmm. interacting with your people. And you're going to start a vlog? Yes. Yeah, so... Um, I'm going to start back on YouTube. Like I was doing YouTube, but it wasn't like really me. Why? Why is that? What do you mean? Um, I like to keep it like very. I'm very like I like to be very personal with my fo- with my followers. So when the videos that I was doing, my manager was helping me out. I had friends. I had people filming for me, and I feel like I wasn't really being myself. And now that I'm going to start vlogging, actually grab the camera, record Yourself. myself. I feel like I can be. Is more personal. What's your element? What do you feel like is your element? You taking over everything? Like, I know you have your manager. Mm-hmm. You get your setup. You know, that's, shout out your manager that set this up for us, too. Yeah, he, I mean, he helps me a lot. He's amazing. <laughs> he is, yeah. That's <laughs> why I told him, I was like, as soon as I got the email, I was like, well, I'm dealing with somebody's manager. Like, this is, <laughs> this is crazy to me. But one day we'll get there. Dylan will be the manager. So about manifesting. <laughs> oh, it's huge. Yeah. It is huge. But the whole thing, right, like, I tell everybody, like, I feel like I'm in my element when I have my control. Mm-hmm. I get to control the outcome. Like, if if you set this up and it doesn't work, like, bro, I didn't control this. Right. Like, you did this. I can't. Mm-hmm. But I tell everybody, like, when you let other people have control of your stuff, like, it's out of your control. So whatever happens, like, yo, like, it is what it is. And the thing is that you can explain to them how you want things, but things are not going to come out as good as your vision of what you had in mind yeah so like for me now with the vlogs like i want to i already have in my how i want my vlogs but i'm more excited about that like i'm going to be able to edit those videos for myself and just be more of myself yeah yeah so that's what be, i'm excited be authentically yourself yeah without the repercussions mm-hmm. and if even if there is repercussions it doesn't matter because you're still you right and then like i'm gonna say like those videos that are are on YouTube, that it wasn't me. Yes, like, that, that's me being myself, but just having the camera, just, like, you know, like, being Taking myself. Control. Yeah, like, I love that. That, that, it, it changes, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole, mani- how you said, manifesting. Did you manifest this where you're at right now? Um. Or when it, when your first video blew up, what was the, like. Ooh, I never talked about how everything happened with Amanda. Let's do it. Yeah? Run it. Hell yeah. Okay, so. We got nowhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
that day I was still working, right? And then um, I had to film a video. I was like, dude, like I told my friend from Seven Eleven, like I had to go up to a store. I want to film a video, but like I'm just, I was very tired. I just want to go home and sleep. But I was like, I had to have a video ready for tomorrow. So he's like, come over and film, and I'll ho- I will help you. And I was like, okay. So I was going through a TikTok. I had nothing planned out to film because I usually like planning my videos just to get there and just film. But I was going through my for you page like maybe two hours and nothing, nothing was coming up. Until I, we, my, my friend was like, let's take a break. Let's go get some tacos and then come back. There we are in the, in the car eating tacos, going through my for you page. And then the song Amanda came out. I was like, oh, like this is catchy. Like I like this. Then I, I click on the sound. I was like, oh, not a lot of people are like using this sound. But there isn't like a really like a trend or like a specific dance for this. I was like, I want to film this video. We filmed this video, and then, um, yeah, after I saw, like, numbers were going up with the amount, I was like, oh, what the heck? Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, I got, it, like, maybe, like, a million views less than 24 hours. And I had a feeling. I was like, okay, like, I feel like this is going to do good. Yeah. So I called my friend Alex. I'm like, hey, I want to film another video with the same sound. Like, I have a feeling it's going to happen. Like, something's going to happen with this. And then, um, yeah, he he's he's been amazing to me so we went i went back he filmed the video with me and the numbers were going up again i was like okay like i have a feeling i called one of my friends i was like i feel like this is gonna become like a trend like this is gonna be like my my takeoff yeah so let me start making more sounds with this sound and yeah i just i don't know i just like i feel like i always been wanting this to happen but i feel like you just feel that that feeling, something that I never felt before. You can't explain it. Yeah. You just know, like, hey, I know this is going to work. I think after seeing a girl from Walmart using that sound and doing, like, the dance that I was doing, I was like, oh, shoot, like, this, that's where it hit me. I was like, this is about to become a trend. And here you are. Yeah. <laughs> here you are. How many followers now do you have on TikTok? Uh, half a million. God, damn. One, one, I want to be like you when I grow <laughs> up. <laughs> No, but you had the feeling you you manifested your vision because you're like, yo, like maybe if you would have told us before December, like, ah, oh, nah, it's not going to be a trend. Mm-hmm. I could tell everybody that if you click on that sound, I'm sure your fucking videos are all over it because you did it. Mm-hmm. You took one idea, posted one, and you just fucking rolled with it. Right. You did it. You continued that's the thing about continuing something that maybe not like it's not a for sure thing and you're like fuck it let's run it yeah. so did you ever get in trouble about filming in 7-eleven no actually like the owner of that 7-eleven he says like i can go anytime and film and can yeah. we get taquitos from there because they're pretty they're yeah pretty <laughs> <laughs> they're <laughs> pretty dang. even like the marketing like the people who goes and just yeah. to like check out the store everything they even ask so, like oh where's the tiktok girl where's amanda girl like the marketing team already knows about me so i think and they just love it what's what's the biggest event you've hosted right now so i know you did the la county fair right mm-hmm. and then you did a hockey game yes i went to the um and An- anaheim ducks? ducks yeah anaheim ducks okay then the biggest, I for think. you, like for you, mm-hmm. yeah, like I know there's there's mm-hmm. events that you're gonna be taking over and and hosting, but for you, what was that like? Damn, bro, I'm really doing this. I think I wanna say for Los Cerros del Norte, and for uh, Adidas. <laughs> That's oh, I seen the Adidas one. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Come on, dude. The whole fucking <laughs> thing of Mexico, the whole yeah. new the jersey that just came out, dude. The New Jersey? Uh, <laughs> Again, my dude is not a... I seen this. I seen it. I was like, yo, that's fucking... That's so yeah, dope, dude. It, it was it was amazing. How do you feel? Like, you um, got that done, seeing the video done. Like, how do you feel that you were invited and in a part of this whole revelation of the New Mexico jersey? Mm-hmm. I I mean, I'm a, I love soccer, so... You played? No, I suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... I. Uh, I feel like growing up, my mom my mom was a huge soccer fan more than my dad. <laughs> so I feel like that's where I got it from. But, yeah, like for me to be part of that and just yeah. kind of like introduce like the New Jersey, that was amazing to me. So when I saw that, because they DM'd me, and I was like, oh, like this is weird. The girl said like, hey, like uh, I'm, I work for Adidas, for, for La Selección Mexicana. We would like you to 
I want to tell you something. I was like, what the heck? I was what? like, well, you can just email us, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I messaged her back. I got in a phone call with her. And then my I called my manager. I was like, hey, like this is something like amazing. I really, really want to make this work with this company. And then he got in the call. He set up everything. And thank you to him. I was part of that campaign. So, yeah. One of the other TikTokers that was there is someone famous too, no? Yes, uh, Nicole and their uh, shoot, I forgot her name. I, I know her username yeah, is, yeah, is yeah. Kiss Me, but I forgot her, her, her name. I'm horrible with names. <laughs> oh, must too. That's yeah. why if you tell me your name today, tomorrow, like. You'll be Amanda? <laughs> <laughs> what up, bro? What's up? How you doing, my You're dude? Right? <laughs> oh, hey, bro, what was her name? <laughs> but, damn, that's crazy because you're literally doing things that as children as we're kids like we look up to mm -hmm. like watching the selection you know going to la county fair dodger game hockey games right you're just like damn bro that's crazy and we're just fans and now you're part of the whole the whole thing yeah the whole revelation the whole like it's crazy for sure is what's your your goal like what would you want to host be a part of that hmm. manifesting i'm telling you I guess it's not like hosting, but I really, really want to meet Chicharito. Like, I haven't got the chance, and I would love to make a video with him. He's so. a gamer. Uh huh. He is. Yeah, he's a gamer. Yeah, so I feel like the only way I can get is like if I you get into games game? <laughs> to Warzone. Hey, that the whole Twitch and everything. You gotta, you gotta get into all that too. Like, I'm sure he knows about me because I already film at the Galaxy got, Stadium, yeah. and then he. We did. We we do. We've been planning to go. I think last time Are it didn't work out. Are you guys Galaxy fans or LAFC? What are we doing? <laughs> Seattle? I'm a, I'm a whatever the vibe is. I'm oh, that type of you're, dude. You're just being nice. You're I'm, an LAFC fan, huh? No, I'm not. I'm not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's just like, are you serious right now? Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> no, uh, well, the last time we were supposed to go to an LAFC game, right? No, I told them Galaxy and then ended up being LAFC. And then we finished here, and we're like, all right, well, let's just eat, go to LAFC game. And we went to <laughs> go eat, and there was a guy with a jersey. We're like, yo, are you going to the game today? Like, we're going to go. He's like, what do you mean, bro? It's already finished. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's cool, dog. But now we've – I've been – I've never been to LAFC game. I've been to more Galaxy games. Okay. Guys, man. There you go. Okay, that's where we get it. We're getting along. So we're we, we're good now. We're we're still good. Yeah, we're still good. <laughs> I seen that you did that the whole video at, at at the Galaxy Stadium. Like, you're doing things that as kids people inspire to one day do something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe not content wise like that, but to be a part and being the stadiums, being the field. Like, you're sitting in the seat that many wish to one day be or hope to be. Right. And you're continuing. You're thriving. You're now December, what are we now, seven seven months into this whole this whole game of social media? I know. It's, I'm telling you, the whole lifestyle has changed. It's different. If you talk to a, say, 12-year-old you, what would you tell her? I would have never believed I would be here, to be honest. Because, honestly, like, I've always been into, like, filming. Growing up, my dad was, like, really into, like, filming, recording, and that's how I, I, I guess, like, I started my, my love to it. And I will, I have videos of me, like, on YouTube, like, when I was, like, 15 making videos, but, they're like, they had, like, 20 views. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I mean, and after that, like, as a kid, I always loved filming, but I never really saw it as a career or never really thought about, like, it could become something. Yeah. So that's when, like, I just focus on, I guess, like, a regular job, which I was doing medical assistant. And then I was uploading videos on my, on TikTok. And, yeah, I just, like, I never thought it was going to happen. Like, the maybe, like, the middle school girl that I was trying to do videos, never th I never thought I was going to be here. So for confidence-wise or believing in yourself, what can you tell talking to a 12-year-old you? I will say do not care what others think. Because I always felt judged by others, like my school friends, my cousins, my family. Like, what, is, what are they going to say? They're going to think like I'm crazy. I think I just like getting judged. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah, like I would make like, I remember like uploading videos. I would just make a whole different account just so people won't <laughs> find me. <laughs> How many people are on your block list? 
Um, I got dead in blo- I'm just kidding. I'm a very blob guy. I, I feel like more guys. guys, like, before, like, I started, like, social media, but I don't have anyone blocked. Toxic people. Yeah. Did you did you have a big relationship before your platform? Oh, yeah. It, that was very, very toxic. <sighs> can we talk about it? Not really. Huh? Can we talk about it? Yeah, Not we can really? talk about it. How did it change you? <laughs> Were you no, a toxica? No, I wasn't a toxica. <laughs> no, he was a toxic, but now I want, I want to be a toxica. <laughs> Look, to- <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> to- toxic, toxic. I am not toxic. Toxic. I'm not toxic. <laughs> okay. I'm scared. No. <laughs> now, nah, used to be, used yeah. to be. Yeah, I'm a retired toxic person. Okay. Retired though, but uh, how did like getting out of your that relationship like change you? Um. Well, actually, he's a guy who got me into a TikTok. So, and. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he, he because he is a social media, like, uh, content, like, manager, all that stuff. So, he knows a lot about social media. So, I didn't know TikTok, what it was, right? So, after I started getting views and following, um, he kind of, like, saw it and made me feel like I wasn't getting anything from it. And he was like, oh, you're just, like, pretty much, like, wasting my time on it. And, um. Yeah, like after we broke up. Well, yeah, after we broke up, now I'm doing this. So, so sometimes I wonder, I'm like, I wonder if, if he's in my videos or. Come on, you know this. You know, I know. You know. But I just, I just wonder, like, I, what's going through I, his head. I was. That's what I was telling him. I was like, if he didn't know us now, we're gonna end up on your for you page no matter what. Mm-hmm. You can hate us, you may whatever, but <laughs> we're gonna end up on the for you page. Right. And if we don't end up on it, someone's gonna repost it and, and share it, yeah, and or, share it, or even send it to that person. Ah, those those people that doubt you, it's tough. But that's crazy because the whole beginning part of it, like now you're here, now you're doing it, mm-hmm. and now you are this girl with the bucket hat, this <laughs> ideal motivational, funny dancing influencer that everybody sees and like, oh my god, that's her. Uh-huh. Like if we see you in like in the street, I'm for sure I'll be like, damn, I know who she is, dog. <laughs> but I won't go up to you. Mm-hmm. Like I think everybody deserves their their privacy, right? Their their time because I I've, maybe you get enough of that wherever you go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you can be eating with your family, and then we see you. And I could we could be rude. Oh man, let me take a picture with you. Uh-huh. Like nah, man. Like they need their time. They're people. Right. Do you feel like people forget that you're still a person? I think, yeah, they are. Because, like, I get comments, like, uh, whenever I go live or just, like, comments on my videos, people just are rude to me. They never, like, I haven't got it. Thank God I haven't got anyone, like, say it to my face because I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I would probably will cry. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Crying doom <dude>, deck. <laughs> no, but, yeah, like, I get comments, like, people are just, like, very disrespectful that I know they will never say that to my face. Yeah. Like, I got in comments saying, because I guess, like, there's some guys who are, like, oh, where I want to show, I don't know, like, boobs or your twerk or uh, things like that. You can put Dylan on the camera. He can do it. Yeah. He can twerk. <laughs> put, put some bad bunny. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the dude. But I feel like guys are, I'm not saying everyone, but I'm saying, like, a lot of guys are so used to seeing girls as a an object. And they just want to, like, see, like, boobs, like, as or just, and, I, like, I'm not for it. Like, I'm not going to be, I don't want that platform for myself. Yeah. And I hate people coming up to me, commenting that on my comments, because I have a lot of kids, too. So, and I don't like that. Like, I go through people's page, too. I'm like, you have a, you have a children, you have a kid, you have a girl. <laughs> you're you would na- you're never want, <laughs> you're yeah, like, this. you would never say that to your daughter. Yeah. And I feel like those are just comments that I, I don't like seeing. It's because we people see you have a platform and they feel like they, they're entitled to, mm-hmm. like, you're our puppet. Right. Whatever we say, you're going to do because it's about social media. Uh-huh. You get, But it's like, no, that's not the case. Right. Like, there, there's a level of respect. You got to give respect in, or, in order to get it back. Mm-hmm. And if you don't get it back, fuck it. It is what it is. Right. You move on. Hey, I'm not a... I'm not going to be around you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things that are going to happen and probably already happened too. But as guys, fuck, I'm, I hate that we put ourselves under the buzz, but fuck, we're dogs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I feel like there's, like, certain, like, levels, like, you have to know your limits too. How people were raised. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
I know my parents didn't teach me to do certain things like that. And, I mean, to be out there like that, like, if I do something disrespectful right now, right, mm -hmm. my thing is, like, bro, like, fuck, how? I don't want that. Like, why do I want her to leave with that that opinion on me of what I just did? Right. Or that comment. Or image. Or image, right? Uh -huh. Because... Bro, it, it, it speaks volumes of who you are as a person. Right. And you don't got to put everything on camera. You don't. I know this. Mm -hmm. Like, there's things that we're going to talk about outside of this camera or even before, like we did earlier, and then we don't need to record. Right. Because there's things that could be on there and there's things that don't have to be on they there. They could just stay. Yeah, like, they could be genuine. They can be us. And it's like, yo, I don't need everybody to, to see this because if we just, for every little moment, just turn on the camera because we're going to do this. Uh-huh then no, like, that's not it. Like, right. I think we have our best moments outside of the camera. We have our best and funniest, most intimate moments when this shit's not even on. Uh -huh. And I'm like, fuck, bro. I Do wish you wish sometimes like it was recording? Oh, yeah. Like, we just we just started, like, the we just started like the vlog, uh -huh. too. Like, but it's because what we do outside of this podcast, like, we go, after this, we're going to go break bread. We're going to go eat. Okay. Having the conversation eating, it sometimes it's 10 times even better because we're like, Damn, bro, like, it's crazy what we go through, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, damn, I wish maybe we could have had this. But in reality, like, no, nah, like, this this stays between us. I don't need this. I don't need to always put be on camera in order to, to get, like, like we're going to see somebody. And Cindy blessed. Um, she was eating at the restaurant. The waitress confined in her. And she literally blessed the waitress with 150 bucks. Oh, wow. Yo, go take your kids out to eat. Have fun with them. That wasn't on camera. That wasn't filmed. That wasn't, right. hey, just record every time. Like, I've done it some a couple times where a man is selling flowers, and they spend times out there. They do or when it's hot outside. Yeah, and it's hot, yeah. and they spend time. And I'm like, yo, like, ¿cuántas tiene ahí? Oh, traigo the bucket. Traigo como unas diez. Dámelas. Mm -hmm. What? I'm like, yeah, just, I don't know who I'm giving to, but just give me all them, yeah, go home. Yeah. Like. They're I, the son, and you know. Like, you're you're a, a father, you're an uncle, you're a grandpa, you're whoever to whoever is waiting for you at mm -hmm. home. They need you home. Like, right. you worked enough hours. Don't worry. And even if you felt like you didn't, yo, go home. Because right. if I get blessed, I know me blessing you is going to come back in a different way. Uh -huh. It doesn't need to be money. It doesn't need to be fame. It doesn't mean, mean to me record this and get famous of how I'm helping somebody. Mm -hmm. It's going to come back in another way. Right. You know what I mean? Like, for some reason or another, we're sitting here in this podcast. Right. You're here. For other people, like, oh, my God, dude, you did it. You fucking got there. I'm like, nah, man, it just took time. It took time to reach out. It took mm -hmm. time to plan it. And for some reason or another, people cross paths because they're just meant to cross paths. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to, the people you're going to meet is endless. True. It's endless. You're going to meet some great people. You're going to meet some POSs. <laughs> you're going to meet some people you never want to see ever again in your life. And then you're going to meet those people that really change your life because of who they are and how they treated you. And that's what it's about. Do you believe, like, meeting people, like, is for a reason? We, yeah, we talk about this a lot. I'm Even if they don't stay in your life, like, you learn something from that. Even if it's just one thing. Chris said the best when we're in San Diego. There's people that come come into your life and teach you something, and unfortunately they will leave, but the lesson never leaves. Mm -hmm. There's people that came into our life for a certain reason. No hate against them because I don't want to waste time and energy doing that, but I know what they taught me, stay with me, and now I just I got to move forward. I could sit here and, damn, bro, I missed that person, or damn, bro, fuck that person, this, yeah, yeah. this, but That's how nah, man, to, yeah. wish... I wish you the best. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're missing, I hope you find it. Right. I just know I can't help you no more because if I try to help you, then that means I'm going away from what I really need to do. Uh-huh. I'm trying to serve a purpose. I know you're trying to serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. So with everything happening, it's like, yo, I can't hate on you. Hate is a strong word. I don't want to waste time on that. I don't want to waste energy. So right. let's keep pushing forward. Mm -hmm. What's the best piece of advice you've gotten throughout your life? Let's see. Got the good questions now. It only took us an hour to start it up, but we're good. <laughs> um, what the fuck am I looking for? <laughs> I, man, I don't know. I just... 
I feel like I haven't really gotten advice. <laughs> just kind of more like, I, maybe more like a life lesson. Just uh, like I said lesson. earlier, just risk life. Just have fun and don't leave it for like what, what would have happened. And what was the worst piece of advice or the worst lesson? The worst lesson? Mm. I guess it's not bad. But, I mean, just having to lose my dad and having to learn that way of me, having to, the way that he passed out, it was, like, so, like, not not expected. Can we get into it? Yeah, we can get into Slightly. it. Slightly. When, um, reason why, and I'm not, I'm not trying to bring waterworks or anything like that, you know, I'm not trying to cry today. <laughs> I cried a lot yesterday. <laughs> I don't think I got enough, but, uh, what, what age did you lose your, your dad? I was 18. 18. Mm-hmm. Eight years ago. Yeah. Going through that change, that year, were you in a dark place? It was, yeah, it was, um, no, until, like, after I lose my dad, like, that was just. So, like, yeah, annoying. so, like, af- like after that, uh-huh. that happened, you, you lost your, your father. The rest of that year, how was it for you? How did that look like? It was very tough because, like, I was very close to him. So, and that was, like, I was working with my dad. He was a waiter. So he got me a job with him at his job. And after that, like, going back to work and not, like, having him there anymore, it was very tough. So I even told my mom, like, I have to quit this job because, like, that was my dad and me going to work and not, you know, having him just being alone. Yeah. It was really tough. So I had to, like, quit my job, and then my mom, she's, like, she was going through something very tough. So I feel like I had to be, like, the strong one because my mom, she's, like, very, she was, like, going through it a lot. Do you, do you take that? Mm-hmm. Do you take that upon yourself, like, I got to be that that person? I to feel carry like this? at least, like, to be the strongest, like, to not show my feelings as much how my mom was feeling. Because there, there was some, like, she was, like, losing a lot of weight. She was like, barely eating. She was, like, not motivated. So I had to be, like, that supportive person to my mom. Um, Feel that void? Yeah. And then, like, my two younger brothers that I had, too, like, I had to be that support. Um, so it was, like, very, very hard. How many siblings, Dennis? I have two. Two? Mm-hmm. You're the oldest? I'm the oldest. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you had some big shoes to fill in. Yeah. So would you say you fill, you filled in the shoes that your dad left there? At the door? Um, for that um, moment? Yeah, like for that, that moment. Time? For that time, yeah. You were I had to be, like, the strong one, like, the positive one. Like, I couldn't be sad and just be sad with my mom because, like, then, you know, it wouldn't. <laughs> we couldn't, like, move couldn't on. Work. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't work. Couldn't work. Do you remember all that, all that vividly? Because, like, I lost my best friend. I lost my grandpa. I lost my uncle. And I could tell you play by play. From the the day before mm-hmm. to the day after to the day after, I could tell you. But play by play, hour by hour, minute by minute, I could tell you. Uh, yeah, me too. It's like so. Like the way that my dad passed away, he had um, leukemia. So, um, he was like, it was in December, and he started like bleeding from his gums. He like started like getting bruises. He was like falling asleep anywhere. Like he would like he can be in the couch or right now. Like he would just like knock out, right? So. Um, yeah, he was very feeling really, really weak, not, he couldn't taste the food, so we were like, okay, like, what's going on? Something's wrong. So we took him to, um, my mom made, called to make, like, an appointment to the clinic to make a, just to see what was going on, but that night, my dad wasn't feeling good after work, right, so I told my dad, like, hey, let me take you to a hospital, like, you don't look good, so we drove to a hospital, my mom and I, my two brothers, they stayed home, and... They're like, okay, we're going to have your dad stay over the night just because, like, we need a doctor and we need to see, like, what's going on. Yeah. So after that, they did that whole, like, exam thing, everything. And, uh, like, okay, we have to transfer him to another hospital. And that's when I got worried. I was like, oh, well, like, what's going on? Yeah. And um, he's like, he might have leukemia. He might have, like, the first stage. If he is on the first stage, then, you mm-hmm. know, he's good. Like, we will give him medication for everything. Yeah. We'll go through the tr- treatment and everything. So... They took him to another hospital, and I went back home to with my brothers. My mom, she was only with, with my dad. And that night that he went to the hospital, 
I was on FaceTime with him. And that was the last time I spoke to him. And the next morning, they told us that he passed out. Because he, like, they gave him more medication that his body couldn't take it, so. I'm so sorry. So that's how it happened. <laughs> it was very tough. It was very tough, for sure. You never cry, huh? No, I don't want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I'm waiting for you already. Um, but it's tough. Because there's things that, you know, when... How you said earlier, you had to be that support system for your mom. And I think the good the good ending to this podcast is from what we've been getting back of, you know, shout out Gage and Dre, is as parents, we don't see, like, our kids go through, you know, what we feel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I know when my uncle passed, I know my cousin took in a lot. And luckily, when situations happen... I was able to move out. She came to live with me, and she paid her part. She did her thing. And, uh, I mean, just not recently, bro. Like, a couple months ago, we actually had a moment, and she finally just let loose. Mm-hmm. No one understood. My Like, you know, as kids, we don't we don't see it too much. Like, we, right. don't, we don't allow ourselves to feel because we know if we feel, we can't move the way we need to move. Uh-huh. There's shit that we got to get done. Right. Because if I allow myself to cry right now and be depressed right now, I, it's not going to allow me to be who I need to be in order to keep moving to forward. Continue. To continue. Mm-hmm. I think mean, after this podcast, after listening to you talk and just hearing uh, briefly about you right now where you spoke to us, like we could, I could just tell like you are a strong-minded, strong-willed person. Like You're ready to go onto the big leagues and be in that spotlight and handle what you need to handle because you know what you got to get done. You can get knocked down. Mm-hmm. People can talk about you. People can talk bad about you. Do this, do that. You're going to keep pushing forward. Like, you have to at one point give yourself those flowers, though. You got to give yourself that pat on the I back. Don't like, yet. <laughs> no, not yet? Not yet, no. Well, what do you feel like? When, when can that be? Um, like, going back to with my mom, just helping her out. That would be, like, my biggest. I'll be like, okay, that's where, like, I made it. Yeah, I just, because, like, my mom, she's, like, supporting my brothers now. So yeah. I want to take that road now that my dad is not here. So just be like, okay, mom, like, you don't have to really worry about having to work yeah. a lot. So I, I feel like that's where I'll be proud of myself. And you're going to, though. You got to speak into goal. existence. I feel like that's the goal, yeah. You got to speak into his existence. You're you're doing your work. You're doing what you got to be doing. Mm-hmm. And, shit, you're not stopping. So what what can we if you could tell us a phrase, a quote that you resent with, you live by, you remember, like, what would that be? For for anybody listening in, anybody watching, and they're not going to watch because mm-hmm. of me. They're going to watch because of you. Um, I guess not a quote. It's more like manifesting. Whatever you set up your mind to it, like, it, it will happen. Like, you just have to say, I feel like, kind of think of that moment, how will you, f- you feel once you reach that goal? Because I think about that a lot, like, once how would I feel once I'm, like, able to help my mom? Like, I already feel the feeling, pretending, like, I already, like, I'm doing it. Yeah. It's just about manifesting. I, I really b- believe a lot about manifesting, to be honest. Manifest that shit. Yeah. But you got to put in the work. Oh, yeah. Like, it, you can't be sitting around just waiting for it. Like, <laughs> it's going to happen, bro. <laughs> it's going to happen. Bring a cocktail. <laughs> Bring no, a sh- but, like, it's a, you have to put in the work. For sure. You have to. Oh, yeah. So is there something we're going to look forward to besides your vlog coming new? Mm, I really want to start doing merch for sure. Bucket hats. That's, Bucket that's hats. a must. I feel like, oh yeah. <laughs> put, you already got one order, two, three. But you got to put like 2X size because my big ass is always, <laughs> always thinking. But, I mean, we're excited. I'm so thankful. Glad you you made it. You made it here. You made time. I'm so happy. I w- I'm I'm here with you guys. So <laughs> don't make me cry. Don't, don't make me cry me again, bro. I just cried early in the morning. I'm gonna take a toast to this podcast. Not a lot. What is it? You want one? You don't have to. But I'll, I'll stick with this. You're yeah. good, Dylan. Do you want one? Okay. <laughs> it's already on camera. For what do you mean gonna make it look? Ah, uh, Dylan. Just close Dylan. your eyes if you're watching this. <laughs> if you're watching this, close your eyes real Pretend quick. This is tequila. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Dylan. I didn't miss work. 
Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Wait, everyone is taking a shot? Nah. <laughs> Just a small, a small one. You know how they say. You know how they say you're gonna go, you're gonna go eat with your people and get a glass of wine. That's kind of what it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just just as soon as it leaves the bottle, stop it. As soon as it leaves the bottle, just stop it. (laughs) No, it's vodka. (laughs) No, I'm from Michoacan, but bro, been being to Jalisco. You know what? You you giving Michoacan vibes. Yeah. (laughs) What does that mean? Whoa, whoa! Before we end this, before we end this, what does that mean? Because I dated someone who who was from Michoacan. Was that so bad? They're like very no, it's not bad. Okay, cool. <laughs> 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 Wait, you didn't you, you stopped it. Huh? What what do you mean? Okay, what's the Michoacan vibe? I feel like they're very like confident, like very como muy trabajadores. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like people from Michoacan are just like that. We are. También los de DF. Oh, they didn't. <laughs> like they're really like easy to take like to get along with. I tell everybody I'm an introvert in an extrovert body. Really? Yeah. Like reason why this is called a toast of life. Shout out a toast of life. How we are. I gotta drink a little bit to like gain that confidence. Mm-hmm. In the small TikToks that like I've done, like it takes a lot for me to be like, I right, let me put the camera down and let's roll. But why? Like <sighs> I'm so judgmental on myself, like, bro, I don't look good. Or I don't think it went good. Mm-hmm. Huh? Oh, you're stupid. <laughs> I do it. I really post for him now. But I don't know. It's just that, like, now being where we're at now, like, yeah, getting a little bit of confidence. Mm-hmm. But it's always that in me, like, I'm not good enough. You know, that's how I was, too, with myself. And, like, before when I used to go film, all my videos, like, not now, but before, like, I would be so embarrassed or shy to film in public. And, like, oh, what are people going to think about me? Do I look good? Do I not look good? Yeah. And now, like, I don't care. Like, as long as, like, I'm happy with myself, like, it's just, I mean, it took me a while, but I'm happy. Like, I don't care what people say. <laughs> so. That's it, bro. That's yeah. the podcast. <laughs> All right. I'm taking a toast. Everybody watching right now, make sure you subscribe. You keep subscribing and sharing the message because this shit is growing. This shit is taking off. We're still getting started. We got to sit down with the one and only Magali, a.k.a. Amanda, a.k.a. 7-Eleven. A.K.A. Bucket Girl. <laughs> A.K.A. Bucket Hat Girl. <laughs> A.K.A. Everything. I mean, this is definitely surreal. This is definitely an honor. And I know we're the same age, but I, f- like, I look up to you. Oh, thank I, you. <laughs> we're literally the same age, but everything you've done, like, yo, one day I hope we're in similar shoes and we get to see each other at a similar event or just do a second podcast and catching up with I'll everything. I'll be down, you're, yeah. Doing a second podcast, catching up with everything you've done. Up until now, you're seven months into it, doing a lot. We can't wait to what this December looks like for you, too. So, everybody, boom, a toast. Cheers. A toast. Ready? And that is it, bro. Let's roll. <laughs>